Hi, I'm Öznur Köşker. I'm studying molecular biology and genetics. I was in the Sarma laboratory during Young Scientist program. Today I will present a background about ATP synthase, the indispensable protein of life. So the flow of my presentation is as follows. First, what does Sarma laboratory does? What is ATP? What is ATP synthase? The difference between ATPase and ATP synthase. And finally, structure and function of ATPase. I will start with what is going on in our laboratory. These photographs are taken by Prada Serma. They mainly study these cute pink halophilic archaea, NRC1 cells. You can see the colonies, the liquid culture and the agar plate containing NRC1 cells. Gas vesicles allow them to float on the surface of liquids, as you can see. And this is a saltern lake. Uh, they are visible on the surface of lakes. They are highly adapted to uh, salts. And you can see a single um, two micrometer cell of NRC1 here. Now let's move on to the ATP and ATP synthase. Um, ATP is the biological fuel of all cells. The energy needed in biochemical reactions is provided by this molecule. And this is the definition of life according to NASA. Life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. The ability of cells to sustain their cells comes from the usage of ATP. They synthesize and use this energy in cellular processes, such as in chemical reactions, in mechanical works like transporting proteins, or in transport works for transporting ions, for instance. It's a renewable energy source. They are, uh, each molecule of ADP is recycled around thousands of times. You can turn ATP back to ADP when cells need energy. The, the bonds, uh, the energy in its third bond is uh, released when it's, uh, when it's hydrolyzed again to ADP. In addition to this high renewable amount, I will tell how much ATP is used in a day. Here's a quite interesting knowledge about, a, about human body. It produces and uses ATP more than its weight in a day. Chemical energy stored in foods are converted to be, should be converted to ATP to more readily usable form of energy. This explains why we need ATP after taking food. But how can we measure the amount of ATP used? One way is measuring the consumed oxygen amount. This equation shows the oxidation of glucose and transferring the energy inside it to the ATP. And from this equation, uh, this is the ATP amount produced per liter of oxygen. An average college student consumes around 400 liters of oxygen per day. This means 60 kilogram of ATP is recycled in a daily basis. Now I will move on to the mechanism responsible for ATP synthesis, to the ATP synthase enzyme. ATP synthase is the protein responsible for synthesizing ATP. Its mechanism is revealed in 1997 by Boyer, Walker, and School. They gained a Nobel Prize for this, for revealing the catalytic mechanism of ATP synthase. They are basically nanoscale motors. They um, resemble very much a hydraulic motor. I will tell you how, uh, I will tell you the mechanism. They are special since they work by rotary mechanism. They use proton gradients to rotate. Uh, hydrogen ions are moved down to their electrochemical gradients to the place where they are less. And this is called proton motive force. While they are moving, they create a torque to be used for rotating this enzyme. And this was a brief summary of how it works. ATP synthase have evolved very early. 
It appears that they have evolved, uh, they all have evolved from a common ancestor because all three domains of life have ATP synthase and the sequence similarity supports them to be evolved from a common ancestor. And there are three classes of ATP synthases, which are F, V, and A type. F type is the one that is found in our uh, in mitochondria in chloroplast of eukaryotes and in cellular membranes of bacteria. V type is found in some organelles, such as in lysosomes, and A type is found in archaeal cellular membranes and bacterial cellular membranes. We need to understand the difference between ATPase and ATP synthase to understand different functions of the protein. ATPase hydrolyzes ATP to transport protons across the membranes. Um, among the three types, only V-type cannot, synth cannot synthesize ATP. This property determines its function, uh, which is transporting ions across the membrane. Uh, here you can see a lysosome. Its lumen is needed to be kept in low pH to degrade compounds. And V-type ATPase functions to functions as a proton pump to acidify its lumen by pumping protons. The hydrolysis of ATP is done by rotating this enzyme in clockwise direction. In other case, ATP synthesis synthesize ATP by using this proton gradients. This time the rotation is in the reverse direction. Uh, so the direction of rotation determines whether ATP, whether ATP is synthesized or degraded. Here's a mitochondria in the membrane and you can see ATP, ATP synthases are located here to synthesize ATP. So ATPase is a more general term to use because all three types of all three classes of ATPases uh, can hydrolyze ATP, but not all can synthesize ATP like in the V type. Uh, I want you to be familiar in distinction of these two terms, but today I'm going to present ATP synthases and more specifically archaeal ATP synthase. First, I'm starting with the structure and how it relates to the function. If you look more closely to their structure, they all share general similarities. There are two main domains and they are connected by stalks. And this is cytoplasmic domain. ATP is synthesized here. And this part is a membrane embedded domain. It translocates ion and it generates the power needed to synthesize ATP in here. This is an archaeal ATP. This is an archaeal ATP synthase. It consists of nine subunits. Membrane embedded domain includes rotator and stator. Uh, rotator has, has uh, um, residues, has negatively charged residues to trap protons for ion binding, and stator has a half channel structure to translocate ions where uh, it allows the protons to enter and release. Cytoplasmic domain has stalks. These peripheral stalks keeps head in place, allow stability. And the central stalk is the moving part of the, uh, is moving part of the ATP synthase and it transmits the torque to the AB uh, domains. Uh, A and B subunits are catalyzing and regulatory domains. They perform ATP synthesis in between them. Now we are looking closer to the membrane embedded part here. ATP synthase can rotate due to the architecture of this steering. And the rotation is coupled to ion flow. As in the case of water wheel here, in, instead of water, ions drive the rotation in ATP synthase. And movement of protons is performed by these two subunits, C and A. And A subunit has residues to keep protons 
And uh, the C subunit has half channel structure that allows proton entry and proton release. And there's a positively charged arginine residue here. It rep repels hydrogens to the direction where they should go and leads leads hydrogens to the other half of the channel. If arginine wouldn't present, um, they should they they might find a short way to um, to across to cross the membrane. So arginine here is crucial. It prevents the leakage of protons to the uh, unwanted site. During the rotation of this ring, uh, C ring, uh, uh, during the rotation of this ring, the D subunit here rotates and changes the conformation of A and B pairs. I will cl clarify this in the next slides. And this is how the rotation is provided in this crucial machine in brief. Now we are looking closer to the cytoplasmic part. Uh, the Nobel Prize winners, Boyer and Volker, discovered the binding change mechanism. You can see A and B pairs in here, uh, respectively. As the rotor ring rotates, the center stalk also rotates and causes the AB pairs to change their conformation. And there are three catalytic sites in between the pairs. Uh, and uh, in three different conformations, they allow the substrate binding and uh, synthesis of ATP. ADP and phosphates are converted to ATP when the conformation changes to the next one. This mechanism is, was proposed by Boyer and Walker crystallized the enzyme and proved this mechanism. All, the, all this knowledge tell us how intriguing they are, they work in mechanism and how important they are for life. All domains of life have ATP synthase. It powers energy for cellular activities and life wouldn't emerge if this protein was not evolved. These are my references. And special thanks to Blue Marble Space Institute of Science for providing me with this opportunity. And thanks to the professor Shiladitya Dasarma and Prai Dasarma. And thank you for thank you the collaborators of the Sarmo Laboratory.